Well, thank you and uh, welcome everyone to this um, very relevant panel discussion where I speak to some exceptional leaders who are, um, who are building up their uh, entrepreneurial businesses and um, obviously impacted at the moment as we all are by, by the pandemic and dealing with various challenges, but trying to stay strong, trying to steer the course and uh, would love to hear uh, from them as we, um, uh, through the course of this discussion. I um, just wanted to emphasize the fact that, you know, COVID has been a watershed moment. Um, you know, we all talk about an e economic crisis, but COVID is not just an economic crisis. It is first and foremost a humanitarian crisis. And how leaders deal with that will actually define how their businesses um, uh, steer their course forward. And as we've all seen, we've seen years of societal shift being squeezed into a matter of weeks. So we're dealing with a lot of change, a lot of um, challenges, but at the same time, what we're seeing is leadership with empathy, and we're seeing tremendous amount of resilience, uh, especially from the entrepreneurs. So really pleased to um, be able to speak to these three leaders. Uh, welcome, Chi Soon, welcome, Hamish and Christian. So, Good morning. Uh, Hi, everyone. So let's just ease into it, and I'll, um, you know, I probably want to just start with some of the experiences you faced because we've all faced different challenges depending on which part of the world we're in, which country we're in, um, you know, what industry we're focused on. So um, maybe I'll start off with you, Chisun, in terms of, um, you know, your experience in dealing with some of the challenges and uh, what has that meant for your business? Oh, well, I mean, for a start, I think, you know, like you said, very rightly, it's, it's truly a watershed uh, period for all of us, uh, many of our worlds have been turned uh, literally upside down. Um, and and uh, like us, even for us in, in Carousel, you know, we've had to grapple with, uh, you know, a lot of swings uh, in, in, in uh, having to react to the market and, and also emotional swings of our employees that we have to deal with all the time as well. Uh, but fortunately, uh, as a business, um, you know, our user engagement numbers have been, uh, you know, uh, pretty positive, uh, you know, with, with some shift in, in demands across different categories. Uh, but I think the key takeaway for, for me uh, was that as a business, in any case, uh, we've, we are always reviewing the, and validating our business model, whether we are on, uh, on the right track, whether we are going in the right direction. But guess what? You know, this pandemic uh, served to compress time and force us to accelerate the whole process anyway, right? Because things are changing so rapidly. Uh, we find that we've had to, you know, go back to the drawing boards uh, and, and, and review if, you know, what we are actually doing still makes sense, right? Uh, to the changing world. Uh, and what we've also found out uh, on a positive note uh, is that, you know, it, uh, we've, we've also validated many of the values and the culture that, that we've been embracing all this while, right? Uh, give you a few examples, right? Uh, one is that uh, we, we keep telling ourselves we're mission first, right? And that is to, uh, to, to, to encourage uh, buying and selling, uh, re-commerce. Uh, and then we realize during this period of time, you know, this whole concept becomes uh, even more relevant, right? With people needing to find uh, new avenues to supplement their income, for example, uh, you know, uh, clearing out their cupboards uh, to make way uh, for working from home, for example, right? They need to go uh, freshen up their, their, their workspace. Um, and also uh, the fact that, you know, we are a, a, a very nimble organization suddenly get put to the test as well, right? Uh, how fast can we really respond to those changes? Uh, I remember the early days of uh, the circuit breaker, um, you know, when we started seeing, you know, groundswell of activities of people trying to do good, donating stuff, you know, uh, people going out of job, especially the freelancers in the arts world. And uh, within a matter of days, right, uh, you know, people within our own organizations through grassroots initiatives came up with ideas, cobbled them together, uh, and made them into, you know, full-blown initiatives. We even managed to then uh, get uh, collaborations with government authorities like uh, SG Brand Office uh, to put out this, uh, this program. Uh, so it was indeed a, a, a very humbling period, very humbling experience. 
and and uh, and a period of a lot of growth for for all of us as well. Uh, in, uh, myself definitely. Yeah. No. Look. Thank you for sharing that, Chisun, and uh, being very candid about that. I think we've all this. We've all learned a lot of things. Um, I actually, you know, picking up from what you were saying, I want to actually um, maybe get some thoughts from Hamish uh, specifically around a couple of things. So, Hamish, as as we know, as they say in you know when you board a flight, which we're not boarding these days, but you you'd recall in the old days when you got on a plane, you know, you'd you'd, oh, you'd, you'd be told, look after, yeah, look after yourself and before you look after others, right? So a couple of things for you. What do you do for your well-being? Because you and your leadership team's well-being is absolutely critical as well, because only then can you look after your customers, your team, and so on. And then second, this is a follow-up from that, perhaps. Um, what have you done what has changed for you in terms of driving that engagement and um, you know keeping your customers, partners, and employees, most importantly, um, you know, close? Yeah, I guess some of the, some of the things that we tried to do very quickly was try and understand how do we need to adapt to the fluid environment that we're operating in. So we we work in three countries: Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia. Uh, all had different phases that they were going through of the COVID-19 pandemic and how it impacted you know, our customers, how it impacted our, our business and strategy and how it most importantly impacted our, our teams and how we needed to think about the, the safety and well-being um, of all of those teams. So, so as a leadership team, we worked very quickly on putting together various contingency plans to say, if this change happens, how will we react? Uh, down to how our internal teams react, uh, talking to our customers to understand how to expect they would react, uh, and really having those plans in place so that we can adapt quickly. So, so when things like the, the lockdown of Malaysian businesses happened mid-March, we were able to transition in about 24 hours to all of our employees working from home, uh, all of our employees working in a different way. So some of the changes we made was a lot more interaction, a lot more communication, uh, daily stand-ups for all of our teams, daily stand-ups, uh, not just to start the day, but also to, to end the day, and really increasing the communication from, from the leadership team on down to emails, through town halls, to, through those sorts of things. So we really focused on what do we need to do to, to help the team still be effective, and then how can they, uh, in turn, help our customers to, to think about the challenges, uh, what can they do during a restricted period of business activity? How should they plan to come out of those restricted periods of business activity in the most positive way possible? Uh, and really encourage all of, all of our employees also to personally think about how to deal with the change in circumstances. So, you know, getting them to stop work and do something else at a certain point of the day, because that, that can be quite difficult if you're in the same place that you're relaxing as working to actually have a have a line for yourself to say, actually, I will stop and do something else now. Um, so me personally, I would do that early in the morning to go and exercise, ride a bike, do, do something like that, walk the dog, and then also have periods where you would stop and you know, have lunch with your family, have dinner with your family, make sure you weren't overexerting yourself because uh, very early on, it, it became apparent that this is not going to be a short-term impact. You know, we all wanted a V-shaped kind of recovery. I think we're experiencing the WWW recovery in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, just really encouraging the team, supporting the teams, encourage them to, to look after themselves and also looking outwardly to see how we can look after our customers and, and key clients. Yeah, no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, and I'll, you know, if I share my experience, one of the things we did exactly like yourself, Hamish, was um, in March, we made sure that all, all our team members um, we did a we do a daily stand up as well, and it actually has proved to be so um, revealing as well. You know, I mean, we are there are so many things that we didn't know about each other, and I think it's just made the team come a lot closer together. It's you know our ability to get through things, get things done, is much tighter. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, we started that because the reality is that there are people who are in locations or countries where you know they are already locked in. And, and that people can get lonely and you've got to make sure that, um, you know, we, uh, we help them with that. And with that, I'm going to move over to Chris. So, Chris, I've got um, 
for you, a couple of different questions. Just following on from what uh, Jisun and Hamish were talking about, you're obviously in a different stage of journey in your business, um, slightly different industry, a different location. You're in Indonesia. Of course, Hamish has business there as well, but you're physically based there. Uh, so you would have had different experiences. Would love to get your, um, uh, you know, your thoughts. Yeah, sure. So I think as all of us, we um, started the year 2020 with hopes and dreams. <laughs> we're even on the personal side, we're planning for traveling. Um, for Fabelio, we just closed our Series C, and uh, that was in February. Uh, that's when the first oh, congratulations. Cases, yeah, thanks. So that's when the first cases uh, appeared in China, right? Um, we have to say we underestimated the impact and we always felt it was so far away. Uh, but the first case in Jakarta actually um, was revealed early March. And uh, then the first you know, round of lockdowns globally happened. And uh, of course, we had to understand what will happen to yeah, the world, to Indonesia, um, to our industry, as you say, as well. And then, of course, especially employees and management, right? I mean, uh, in our case, we were not really able to, yeah, basically uh, stop and introspect. Uh, for us, the theme this year is definitely uncertainty. Um, what we really learned is that we can plan, uh, but maybe much more like in 2015 when we started the company, we have to go back into being much more agile, um, have much shorter timeframes of planning. Um, now our business model is not simply uh, best, based and worst. <laughs> it has a lot of scenarios and triggers. And uh, we actually try to uh, plan much shorter now and uh, be much more spontaneous when it comes to uh, triggering these uh, scenarios and uh, plans. And we know that COVID is far from over. Uh, and in fact, Indonesia just got out of the second lockdown, um, which is tough for us as a omnichannel business. We run 21 showrooms um, and uh, all of them had to be closed in March, April, uh, early May, and then again now in September. Um, so yeah, for us, it was clear um, with, just like with my colleagues here, um, projects was down. Um, our showrooms, of course, those sales really went down. So our playbook was really to in improve uh, and focus on online channels. Uh, we saw a shift in behavior and preferences, just like Carousel, right? Um, I'm sure your home furniture, home office, that must have increased gaming chairs. So those fly off the shelves now. Um, but yeah, we have to say that um, we had to recalibrate and uh, we are much, much more online now. So the whole trend of people purchasing online has been accelerated. It's good for us, um, but of course we feel that it's also having a you know, macro impact on, on Indonesia, right? Uh, in fact, today the government will um, publish the GDP numbers, we'll be officially in a recession. Um, so yeah, hard times are coming. Uh, but yeah, we expect the worst. That's what you learned, uh, but hoping for the best. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. And and again, I think um, it's 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 interesting that um, at least you started off the uh, the year with with some good news. I think most most entrepreneurs would be or, or um, you know founders and businesses would be struggling with cash flow issues. I mean, cash flow is one of the biggest challenges, obviously, um, and. Uh, at least that part of your pain is taken care of for the time being. But I'm sure, you know, you'd, given the nature of your business uh, in the furniture business, I'm sure it does have a lot of people impact as well. Um, it is interesting, though, because I'm pretty sure that people are going to be going through a lot of furniture at home because, you know, we never anticipated we'd be using it that much. Right? So, um, but um, just moving on, I mean, you, you, you know, you talked about the challenges and and. Um, that you faced, but it would be great to get a perspective. And you know, any one of you can take this question first. Um, what are the key measures? I mean, that you've taken, whether it be with your people, whether it's technology, whether it's infrastructure. Um, what are the what are some of the big key measures that yeah. you've had to take? Yeah, you're right. I mean, with a pandemic, right, with an impact of this scale, every single aspect of the uh, business was, was affected, right? It's the team, it's the business model, the strategy investor, the whole industry. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of work. It is a lot of work um, to make sure that um, everything is being taken care of. Um, but from a revenue point of view, um, really running the business was clear for us to really have uh, to, to shift to online even more. 
um, while at the same time being much more effective, right? So like specifically what I can tell you is that uh, we focus much more on um, virtual assisted, assisted buying. Um, yeah. So our idea was really to, you know, we used to have online and offline and now with the virtual assisted buying, which is basically online shopping, which is uh, chat assisted, you're able to basically uh, bridge the gap between the two. Uh, so our focus in terms of tech and spending was really on that. Um, we were lucky uh, that we had, we actually decided not to let go of our um, showroom team, uh, but instead we converted them uh, to become chat uh, agents. Mm. And that uh, was tremendous for us. Um, so actually now after COVID, we are much more an online company than an offline company that has shifted really quickly. Um, so, yeah, of course, as a business, we have to grow. We are still burning. Uh, I mean, that's why we raised, uh, you know, the Series C. But it was very important not to, you know, uh, yeah, we, we have to grow. We have to grow. So it was really about short-term tactics such as, okay, let's not spend on anything that will not convert in the <laughs> next uh, one or two months. Uh, let's focus on our predictable channel much more. Uh, we want to be patient. Uh, but can we be patient? That's the question. So we, we uh, yeah, had to do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I thought, Christian, you, you raised a very interesting point about resource, how, you know, about being nimble, re redeploying, uh, you know, capabilities, retraining people and so on. And I just, I, 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 that sort of uh, also gets me reflecting on what we've been doing in, in that light as well. You know, as, as uh, all startups would do and, and Carousel still very much is, uh, is, is still a startup. Uh, you know, we've, we clearly are, you know, very, very obsessed with, uh, you know, mini minimize, keeping our burn rate uh, to a minimum, you know, always very watchful and very prudent about our expenses. Um, but of course, through this pandemic, we, we, we are forced or we are encouraged to be even more so, right? More anal about that. We, we sort of run through all our expense line items, uh, even more ferociously, right? With a fine tooth comb. Uh, but fortunately, we've always had that same, that correct mindset, uh, and that discipline. Uh, of course, during this period of time, we became more conscious about, you know, uh, our growth our resource growth plans, right? So for example, in the past, we might have said, okay, let's go invest, you know, 20 new salespersons here, another, you know, five marketing guys. We, we, we're going to question every single one of them, right? Why is it needed now? Can it be a bit later, right? Uh, the fortunate thing is that uh, uh, because, you know, our work scope and our, our growth opportunities are still there, uh, we have not had to contemplate uh, laying off people, right? More so, you know, we are thinking more about, you know, if, if demands in this area of work lessens, whereas there's some uptake somewhere else, can we redeploy people? Uh, and, and turns out, uh, what I've also observed is that there's a lot of collaborative teamwork that's going on. You know, many people are doubling up, uh, you know, wearing multiple hats uh, because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we are forced to sort of go back to our drawing boards to review our plans, whether we are you know, doing the right things. So there's a lot of rethinking, planning work that's going on. Many people on top of their operational work uh, are also taking on more strategic planning uh, hats uh, at the same time. So we find that the, the people are actually being deployed to much broader use, if you may, uh, during this period of time. And that's, that's how we've been coping and, and, and it seems to be working uh, pretty well for us so far. Yeah, I guess just a couple of extra things maybe from, from my perspective. We, we really sat down and looked at what else could we do with the products that we have or how can we adapt the products that we have to, to support our customers during this period as well. So but we had things like videos as part of our listings. So given people are not going to be able to visit a car showroom, we gave away videos for free to all of our customers and got them to create videos uh, either from still images or to be, if they were still allowed in their dealerships to, to have videos there so they can still have a great interactive experience. You know, we run events for cars, uh, which is on-ground in-person events. Uh, we've quickly worked with an external company to set up a virtual event platform and launch a virtual event in Indonesia in, in July uh, in partnership with some of our key brand partners. And, and that went very well. And, and now it's going to be a long-term part of, of the business. Um, 
you know, we've introduced things like uh, uh, online training for our dealers, got them into closed groups, you know, have that as now a regular part of our interaction with our customers and, and really try to think about how do we also accelerate some of the things that we plan for the future, like an online transactional experience for buying a car to bring that forward and start testing it during a period when people can't go to a showroom or, or can't do, do, do the things that they would usually do to buy a car. So it's how do we adapt and how do we you know, reassess some of those future strategies of the business to, to make them part of the, the here and now. Yeah, and look, I'm also looking at some of the questions from the audience and I think very aligned with my thought process. Um, you know, the, actually the question I wanted to pose was um, the digital economy, right? We, uh, one thing is for sure that, um, you know, the pandemic has been a short in the arm for the, the digital economy. So um, with um, what we're dealing with, adopting to new ways of, you know, our lifestyle, whether it be, you know, our work or um, just the way we are learning and, and, and coping, uh, the digital economy is here to stay. And it will, um, you know, it will hopefully help businesses steer through um, as best as they can. Do you actually feel that the technology that technology A will make a very long-term impact on uh, helping businesses work towards recovery? And second, um, do you actually think that sustained investments in technology will continue? I, I certainly feel that from, from the car industry as part of uh, the economy. So uh, particularly the way they engage with customers and, and their retail approach. So. You know, we're seeing shifts in attitude uh, from key decision makers in some of the biggest brands uh, that operate uh, in, in the region. And that's pretty consistent across all, all three of our countries. So I, I think we're seeing them also shift their uh, marketing expenditure, technology investment more towards understanding that the consumers are already online. The consumers are already making their decisions even about cars online. Uh, and they need to adapt and they need to, to understand that this is going to be the, the future growth path of their business. Yeah, yeah you, you know, for me, I see this whole digitalization wave uh, as something that's been going on anyway. And it's, some, it's something that nobody is going to be able to stop. Uh, it's just that the pandemic, if at all, you know, just accelerated the whole process. So the answer absolutely is, is yes for me, right? That uh, in fact, uh, the wise thing to do is to in fact keep the pace of the acceleration of investment into technology uh, to get uh, on the bandwagon. And I know some parts of our customer base are more laggard still, you know, in, com in terms of technology uh, adoption. Uh, that really, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it, this really is a good time to, uh, to, to do that. And a good thing is, you know, not just in Singapore, but I see, you know, government authorities across the region are uh, also, you know, getting in with uh, support programs to encourage and help industries, uh, you know, better digitalize. Uh, and, and, and I think that's the way to go. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you, you've seen the grants in Singapore by the government in terms of um, SMB grants uh, up to $10,000 for, um, for digital investments. Um, so... Yeah. Sorry, Christian, you were going to say something. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, the blessing of tech and digital to both right, the consumers and the businesses is, is extremely obvious now during the pandemic. Right. Um, we would almost say to us, uh, technology is the uh, solution. So we uh, increased the headcount of our tech team um, and we believe it's the way forward. Fantastic. Now, we've got just over a minute left. Mm -hmm. One last question uh, from the audience around the future of work. Um, how do we do we believe the future of work will be what it is um, that we're seeing today or will it change? Uh, is this going to be the new normal? And are we going to go back to our offices? Do we need those offices? My God, you know, I, I can almost bet uh, my whole life that it's never going to go back to the old way. Not exactly in the same form anyway. We've all tasted, you know, how effective we cannot operate uh, in, in this remote manner. Uh, certainly there are customer facing, front facing staff that needs to be on the ground and in the offices. Uh, but many of the roles, I, I, I bet every company will be revisiting, re-examining how it can be restructured. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think it's going to be a, a combination, but certainly the 100% people in the office 
it's not, not necessary. I think people are now adapted very well. They know how to communicate. They know how to engage. Um, but always, I think there'll still be the need for some kind of face-to-face -face interaction at some point, but maybe that's only once a month uh, or a few times a quarter. Okay, great. Well, thank, thank you, gentlemen. I know our time's up. So I wish you, wish you well, stay safe, and um, wish you um, uh, and your teams uh, all the best too. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Bye -bye. Thanks a lot, Bye.